If you want to start, YouTube is just delayed in going live. But if you want to start, I'll, I'll continue working on it. So. All right, we can start. Good evening, everyone. I call this order, this meeting of Pan-Tarism <coughs> Council to order. Today is December 12, 2023, and it's 7.06 p.m. Would the clerk call the rules, please? Uh, Councilman Rafai? Present. Councilman Musa? Present. Councilman Chaudhry? Present. Councilman Ahmoud? Yes. Councilman Nelsamiri? Yes, present. Councilman Hassan? Present. Mr. Mayor, you are here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Do we have any community announcements? Nothing on the board, Mayor. No announcements? All right. We move to the proclamations, recognitions, and presentations. And we have the first one. Proclamations for Councilman Naeem Chaudhry. Um, would you like to read it? Sure. Do you want it, Ron, or you want me to do it? Yeah, I can do it. Okay, hang on. You're ready. Oh, you want to read it? I got it. Oh, that's right, that's right. City of Hamtramck proclamation recognizing Naeem Chaudhry. Whereas it is with sincere gratitude and admiration that the City of Hamtramck acknowledges the dedication and service of City Council Member Naeem Chowdhury, and whereas Naeem Chowdhury has served our community with unwavering commitment, passion, and diligence during his tenure as City Council Member, and whereas his tireless efforts have significantly contributed to the betterment of Hamtramck, leaving an indemnable mark on the City's progress and development, and whereas Naeem Chowdhury has exemplified the true spirit of public service, advocating for the well-being and interest of our residents with integrity and compassion, and whereas his leadership, wisdom, and collaborative approach have fostered a positive and inclusive environment within the City Council, promoting unity and cooperation among colleagues, and whereas as we bid farewell to Naeem Chowdhury, we express our deepest appreciation for his selfless service, dedication to community, and the positive impact he has had on the lives of Hamtramck residents. And now, therefore, be proclaimed that the City of Hamtramck extends its heartfelt gratitude to Naeem Chowdhury for his outstanding service as City Council Member. Be it further proclaimed this, that this proclamation serves as a token of our appreciation, recognizing Naeem Chowdhury's invaluable contributions to the progress and well-being of the City of Hamtramck. In witness thereof, the City of Hamtramck hereby proclaims this 12th day of December, 2023, as a day to honor and bid farewell to City Council Member Naeem Chowdhury. Mayor Gallo, Mayor. All right, thank you, Councilman, thank you, for your service. We'll be in touch with you uh, always. And feel free to come back and serve in any of the boards <laughs> <laughs> until you get reelected next time. Hopefully. Sure, I, I mean, I'm uh, passionate about serving the community uh, well. I just have to take a little break and recoup my stuff, you know, reorganize and take care of my family and business too, you know, that comes. All right. But I'm, I'm always fine. around, you know, I'm, I'm, I lived in the environment for the last 30 years. I've been doing business for over 20 years and I'll be around. I'll All be right. here. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. All right. The next <laughs> proclamation is the Christmas celebration. You want to tell me all right? Sure. You have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <coughs> City of Hamtramck Proclamation Christmas Celebration. Whereas the spirit of Christmas unites communities and transcends differences, fostering joy, compassion, and goodwill among our residents, and whereas the City of Hamtramck recognizes the significance of Christmas as a time of reflection, gratitude, and generosity, bringing together friends, family, and neighbors, and whereas the twinkling lights, festive decorations, and the warmth of holiday traditions create a magical atmosphere filling our city with a sense of wonder and togetherness. And whereas during this joyous season, we extend our gratitude to the residents of Hamtramck for their resilience, kindness, and community spirit that enrich the fabric of our city. And whereas the city council and mayor of Hamtramck join hands <coughs> to proclaim the month of December as a time of celebration, unity, and shared joy. 
Now therefore be it proclaimed that the city of Hamtramck officially celebrates the Christmas season with gratitude for diversity, resilience, and spirit of its residents, that we encourage all residents to embrace the values of love, kindness, and generosity during the festive season, that the city council and mayor extend their warm wishes for a Merry Christmas to all, hoping this season brings peace, happiness, and cherished moments with loved ones, that the city of Hamtramck encourages residents to partake in community events, festive activities, and charitable endeavors that embody the true spirit of Christmas, that the proclamation be presented to the residents of Hamtramck, symbolizing our co collective commitment to fostering a harmonious and joyful community. Amir Gallup, Mayor, December 2023. Thank you. Next one is a uh, presentation by the UHY audit of the fiscal year 2022-2023. Mr. Mayor, we have UHY here to present, uh, along with some of our finance staff as well. All right. All right. Good evening. Good evening. So we're gonna. So I'm Mike Santicha, partner at UHY, and along with my colleague Marlene Beach, we'll present the fiscal results. Uh, we're gonna do it in a PowerPoint presentation, like we all have, always have, just to give you some highlights. So we did audit the financial statements of the government activities and business type activities. Um, we discreetly <coughs> presented a component union of each major fund and the agri fund. And we're pleased to report we're going to issue an unmodified opinion on the results. So that's the highest level that we can do. Um, required communications. I think we're a couple of slides. Yeah. Very good. Perfect. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> kind of skip the slides. Sure. Um, so there's some required communications that we're, we're supposed to give you based on our profession. Um, some of our responsibilities under generally accepted auditing standards were uh, given to you in our engagement letter. And we also have some more communications. Next slide, please. Accounting policies. They're management's responsibility to select these. They're summarized in our footnote one of the financial statements. The city did adopt a new... Uh, Policy this year, GASB 96, subscription-based information technology arrangements. And you'll see that again in one. Counting estimates, the same. Management <coughs> makes those estimates. Part of our audit, we make sure we audit those to make sure they're reasonable. Some of the more uh, sensitive estimates, including or the net pension liability, the OPEB liability, and depreciable lives of property and equipment. <coughs> The entries, those journal entries we have were provided to management as attachment to the management representation letter. Uh, next, we're not aware that these audited financial statements will be included with any other documents. Pleased to report we had no disagreements with management during the course of the audit. It went very smoothly. We'd like to thank Amir for all his help on this audit. Um, he was very cooperative, got us our answers quickly and responded, which is a good sign for us. Uh, to our knowledge, there was no other consultation with the accountants, and there was no issues disc discussed with management prior to our appointment. Now, Marlene will kind of go over the highlights of the numbers. So, as opposed to going through the financial statements page by page, what we do is just kind of put things into PowerPoint, into uh, charts and graphs. So, uh, as you all know, the general fund is your fund. Um, one of the things we kind of look at is, you know, highs charts from year to year. So we do a little comparison with 2022 to 2023. Um, one of the things we look for is just, you know, the, the percentages. We know the numbers are going to change, but we kind of look to see if the percentage is the same. And you look at cash and cash equivalents last year were about 67%, and this year they're 69. Limited other assets of about, and just about one to 3%. And receivables is just based strictly on the timing. Uh -oh. Last year they were 3.580, and this year they were 3.595. Incredibly <coughs> close numbers. Um, like I said, that's just based on a function of when the, when the year ends. If the year end ended three days later, that would have been a different number just because of money that keeps coming in. Next slide, please. Okay, so assets are what you, the city owns, liabilities are what you owe, and fund balance is the difference. I know this fund balance last year went from 6.291. This year the fund balance is 9.904. That is a direct result of the activities of the city over the uh, past year. Once again, uh, deferred inflows are, it's, that's money that's coming that's not available to be used yet or tax revenue that uh, hasn't come in yet. Things have to be come in within 60 days to be a revenue for the city, or excuse me, a receivable. 
payables and other accruals. Again, once again, that works just like your receivables. It's just a function of when the bills were paid. Next slide, please. <laughs> General fund revenues, uh, property taxes, 7.106 this year, 7 point, excuse me, last year, 7.6 this year. Uh, there was, a, of course, because we talked earlier, there's an increase in taxable value. Uh, the city received payments from Henry Ford Health and Hamtramck Square, totaling approximately 61K. The city also recognized the ARPA money that you received last year. Last year it was shown as deferred revenue. Uh, that was about 2.3 million, so that was recorded in revenue in the city this year. State shared revenue did go down a little bit this year, and that's because last year they did have two census adjustments, so they, everybody's uh, revenue sharing last year was a little bit higher than it was last year. The city sold some properties, seven residential properties, with a, uh, a gain of about $395,000. Income taxes last year were 4.1, this year they're 3.6. Once again, that's a function of when the taxes are collected. Next slide, please. We did see revenues go up, so we did expect to see an increase in your expenditures. But once again, if you look at the percents year over year, they're fairly close. Public safety last year was 13.6. This year it's 13.5. District court is fairly similar. Uh, public works 754, 777. Mm -hmm. The general government went up this year was 3.6. Last year, this year it's 5.2. We did have an increase in salaries across the board, uh, hiring a CFO, an accountant, city manager, and AP clerk total of approximately 209000 through the last year. There was an increase in professional services related to some recruitment costs, um, and there were some settlements this year, so their legal services was up. City had expenditures of about 800000 related to the construction of the remaining buildings with the Sarah Garrett settlement, and about $343,000 in expenditures rated, excuse me, related to the purchase of a street sweeper. Public safety, uh, like I said, that's, that was fairly consistent. It went up about $255,000, which out of $13 million is, is very consistent from year to year. Next slide, please. Fire and sewer revenue, once again, we had the uh, cost of sewage treatment last year was about uh, Excuse me, I jumped a slide. I already do revenues, that's me. So I don't know. Okay. So, uh, okay. It's 12, page 12. Okay, this is a slide, and I put it at this one earlier, so. Thank you. I can't see those numbers that far. <laughs> Sale of water last year was about $3 million. This year's sale of water went up $4 million. A lot of the uh, Restrictions with output the past couple of years where you couldn't uh, collect water funds, couldn't collect past due water funds, no shutoffs. We've seen that. We've, we've seen this increase uh, through other cities also where the revenues have increased substantially. And that's partially due to the, the, what you're going to be able to collect. So our disposal charges were about $5 million last year. This year, about 4.9. There was an Eagle Grant revenue of about $2 million. That's the big difference in your pie from year to year, which makes it... Uh, Changes in the pie chart. Now we can do expenses. Thank you. Uh, mm. yeah, okay, so you did this one, you did that one. This is the next one I have is the water and sewer fund. Is that correct? That's a, yes. Yeah, that's right. That is correct. Yeah, so, okay, the cost of the sewage treatment last year was 48%, this year it's about 42. Once again, Pies are fairly consistent. Operating and maintenance of the sewer and water system was about 2.6 last year. This year it's about 2.7. You did have an increase in revenue. So anytime you see a increase in revenue, we expect to see an increase in expenditures. Cost of water was extremely consistent. 889 last year, 891 this year. Next slide, please. And internal control. So we don't do a full internal control part of our audit, but what we do look is at some of your key controls. 
and if they're operating effectively on our significant areas. And we're required to let you know if there's any material weaknesses or significant deficiencies. Next slide, please. Those are the definitions of a material weakness and a significant deficiency. And we're pleased to report that we did not identify any material weaknesses in your uh, uh, controls that we tested. So they are operating effectively and doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, we'd also like to say that we will be filing the report with the state on time. And actually, this is the first time we've ever presented before we filed it with the report. So again, I'd like to thank Amir for getting everything going so that we were able to do this in a timely fashion. Any questions? I just want to note there will be a single audit. There were over $750,000 of expenditures, but we are uh, waiting on clarification from the state if certain funds are federal or state. So that's not due for three more months. So we're waiting for the state to confirm what the money is before we get the single audit completed. <coughs> and that's consistent with other municipalities. Yep. They're still waiting from the state. So it's the state. So otherwise, we would have had that one. The audit, single audit done completed also. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I can have a mirror back. <laughs> it's pretty busy. All right, so oh, yeah. next presentation is for an update from Tennessee and HPC for the DNR basketball project. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, I have uh, Ray from Tennessee, I have Tom from HPC, and Conrad, who's also HPC, and as you know, our assessor. Hello, and, uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, thank you for having us uh, give a brief uh, uh, update on the project. A few, this project started a few years ago, um, as you guys all know. Um, August of last year, you approved the preliminary budget for this project. Uh, March and April, certain aspects of the grant were approved in DNR Foods Council as well. Um, this has been working with between the Parks Conservancy and the city for a few years. Um, some certain employees that are no longer with the city helped out with this project as well. Um, we just want to give you a brief update of what we're going on and what's going in here. And um, we actually have some good news about this project. So to get a little bit Tom, a little bit more explanation right now. Uh, yeah, good evening, everyone. Uh, we've been, uh, Discovered some good news related to the, the budget for this project that's going to help uh, continue the development of Hamtramck Stadium as a, a real jewel and a destination. So, I talked last time when I uh, presented about the, the success that Hamtramck Stadium has had recently with all the, the baseball activity there. And I think if we can finish off this project with uh, the grant um, in front of us, uh, it's really going to essentially represent the culmination of the, the full uh, development, restoration of the entire facility there, uh, including the field, uh, the rest of the underbuildings um, that are uh, still in disrepair. Um, and at the same time, it will have the benefit of providing permanent restrooms to the Veterans Park side of the parks over there, uh, which we intend will be uh, open and available to the community for all open hours of the park. So uh, great news there. Um, so I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Parker to speak on uh, some of the details and uh, be available for questions. Mayor, Council, Ray Parker with Hennessy Engineers. Um, we have basically the plans for the restroom building are completed. We have to submit them back to the DNR for their final approval. The DNR grants, we have two of them from the DNR Trust Fund and then one from the Land and Water Grant. The way it was broken down is the building is one portion of it and then the site and utilities was the second portion. When we went through and did our initial estimate on the restroom building itself, we were under the budget allotment from the grant itself, but there were other caveats that we could spend that money within the site. So we started looking from the building itself to improving the other outbuildings as well, the accessory building farther up the third baseline as well as the one underneath the grandstands along the first baseline. So we've looked at different uses and occupancies for those. And like I said, those plans have to be turned back into the DNR for their final approval before we can go out for bids. We hope to do that during January so that we can get bids out in January, middle to end of January, have bids back and award and construction starting first thing in the spring next year. Um, with that, the one, there were three plans that I... Do you want the restroom first? Yes, please. So essentially the building is, it's probably hard to see on here. The top, the top one is the proposed building. The lower one is the existing. The red is what's being demolished. So basically we're going to, 
quadruple the amount of fixtures in each restroom, private toilet stalls, ADA compliant. Uh, the DNR grants require universal design, which is more than just ADA. So we have two family restrooms as well. Um, with all of this, we can accomplish the, meet the occupancy code for plumbing based on the stadium seating. Um, and basically we're dressing up the outside of the building using it's a cultured stone product that'll look like brick to try and match the brick that's on the renovated stadium itself currently. And then just putting a new flat roof membrane back on top once we analyze the structure and get the existing one torn off. Um, the next slide. This is essentially the site plan of what we're looking to do. Uh, on the left hand side, there's the restroom building right along the third baseline. And at the north end is the accessory building that we're looking to give it a defined use of what we can do in the future with that. Uh, we have looked at basically storage room, locker room for one of the teams, and possibly a historic museum for some artifacts that could be used in that area. The restrooms is the long skinny building along the third baseline. And then essentially the first baseline building we would turn into concessions or ticket office, storage, and another locker room. So each team could have a locker room within there. Um, what we've really tried to do with the site is in the lower corner of the triangular piece is create more of a entry plaza, kind of dress the area up. Since we have to remove all the concrete along the restroom to get the new utilities, sanitary sewer, water main, and electrical up through there, we're gonna replace all that concrete and kind of create an entrance plaza that will be stamped concrete, brace planters, um, an area for statue in the future. The DNR grant does not allow for statues and fountains and things like that. But with that, the field, we're also looking at adding scoreboard, LED field lighting, uh, the outfield is in terrible shape and needs regrading sod and sprinklers to allow the, the area to function as a, an outfield proper without risking injuries. Um, with that, that's kind of the site plan. The next slide shows uh, an initial rendering that was done by Smith Group in the past and that's kind of what we're trying to replicate this off of. So the entrance plaza is in the bottom dressing up the rest of the, there's an existing uh, security fence that's up around the base of the, the grandstands right now that we're looking to put a more decker permanent fence up and then put brick around the columns, uh, the outfield lighting. The two buildings on the far sides are proposed future. That was part of a master plan that we won't get to with these grants, but that'll be down the line. But that's kind of the overall concept and uh, picture we're going for. But we wanted to present to you, letting you know that with the grant budgets, we're going to be able to do a lot more than we initially anticipated within those grant amounts. And if there's any questions, we have to answer. Any questions for <laughs> well, When do you think it'll start? It's just simple. In, in the spring. In the spring of next year? Yes. And then how long would it be uh, taking, or approximately how many months or a year it would take? It'll probably take close to a year. A yeah, we're hoping the biggest one is the land and water grant requires to be spent first, and that's all the site utilities. So we'd have to do the demolition of the existing concrete, bring all the new site utilities in, and then we can start on the restrooms inside and out. We've really broadened the scope on this. I mean, we've added some more stuff to it. So. Yeah, it, it looks, it looks great. Nice. Yeah, it'll, it'll look it's a better for the asset to the city. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, when we had the meeting on Zoom, and then we spoke about having a, you know, from the outside, washes where people could wash their feet in their, you know, if they play or try to remove that sand from their feet. Are we still going to continue with that? Yes. Outside? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys asked for Yeah, we'll have stations on both sides of the restroom building, as well as the drinking fountain with the pet, pet station and everything. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds good. All the bells and whistles. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you gentlemen. All right. Next one is presentation tennis engineering 2023 year in review and 2024 upcoming projects update. Mr. Mayor, um, I have Tiffany, as we know, and John, as we know, and also John Hennessy. And here's well. right on time. Yeah. <laughs> That's right.
It's coming. Uh -huh. So, good afternoon, um, Mayor, <coughs> City Council. So, we want to start out with the 2023 year in review, kind of go over everything that we've accomplished this year, and then move into what we have coming up for next year. So, I'll start on the left hand side. So, as you can see, um, Lead service lines, we're still continuing to work on those. I had a meeting with the contractor today. They're going to be working through the end of the year. Um, we will hit the compliance number to be in compliance with EGLE. Um, so currently, today, we're at uh, 319, but we have, I have down 370 projected. I think we're going to be up above that even. So, But again, the compliance is 366, so we'll, we will not uh, not hit that. Um, moving down to grants, you can see we got a lot of money coming in through grants. The one thing that isn't added on here is the airmark funding that we just received word from the state um, and finally getting the paperwork going on that one. So that's going to add in another $10 million. So we'll be up to just under $30 million in grant money coming through. Uh, as far as water mains, we were able to complete four water mains um, this year. We do have the Joseph Campo one that we're completing, that one's slated to be begin January 15th, and then the Prescott water main that we're waiting on approval this evening. Um, and we hope to start that uh, early this winter too. As far as roads, we did the reconstruction on Kniff from Conan to Buffalo, and then uh, resurfacing that project uh, worked out really well this year with the putting in the curbs and then doing the resurfacing of the asphalt in the, on those uh, six streets. Um, alleys, we were able to get, I believe it was nine alleys completed this year. We still have two more that um, were on the list currently with the contractor. I don't know if we're gonna be able to hit those with the weather. Um, but we did get a lot of those completed. Um, so moving on to the next slide, we'll give you like a really good, uh, um, gives you a good indicator of what second side of what we were able to accomplish. Um, the green is everywhere we've completed lead service lines um, since the lead service line replacement has begun. So um, that number is about 808 so far total, but then showing everywhere else the projects have happened throughout the city this year. So next slide. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Is that it? No, I'll go up one. <coughs> That's I don't know. There you go. So as you can see, for 2024 projects, so we have a lot of grant money that we were able to secure uh, coming in for lead service lines, as you can see. So through various sources of funding that we're going to be utilizing, we're looking at trying to get 1,700 service lines replaced next year. So it's gonna be a lot of service lines through all throughout the city. Um, each funding source is kind of given its own section to try and get this accomplished. Um, other thing we're looking at starting is the Relief Sewer 1B, so that's the Relief Sewer along Goodson Avenue and Joseph Campo, um, as well as sewer cleaning and televising in the city. Um, as we look at the water main projects, as I stated before, we'll have the Joseph Campo and then the Prescott Water Main, and then we'll have the 2024 SRF ARPA grant money. Where we'll be able to replace six water mains. Um, we'll also be able to finish up the DSMI that's required by the state uh, through the 2024 Airmark SRF grant funding. We're looking at doing uh, close to seven streets there. And then for the roads, we'll be doing the reconstruct, um, the last section of Kniff in between Joseph Campo and Conant. And then we're looking at doing three sections of resurfacing with curb. These are, two of the streets are a lot longer this time. So it's equivalent to like the six that we did this year. But um, because we're doing multiple blocks, um, it just, it comes down to three streets. And then alley reconstruction, we have one, currently we have uh, picked out one really long alley and then the city hall parking lot and alleys. So um, we're still looking into that to see if we can figure out ways to do more alleys within the city. So if you go to the next slide, it's going to give you a really good indicator of everywhere we plan to have construction going on. So it's definitely going to be a busy year in the city. 
guys want in construction. It's <laughs> <laughs> exciting. <clears throat> Any questions? Put that to perspective, we're doing now. Yes, that's the one. The question is not about this. Yeah. It's actually about Kenef as service lines were re repaired and were replaced. Mm -hmm. They placed pavement, but it's not wall enough. So you got people are driving <coughs> on, on Kenef. They got a service, you know, move to the other left lane where, you know, oncoming traffic. So they can move from the uh, potholes. It seems like it's not, it wasn't paved good. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's between, I'll say, McDougal and, Kine uh, and uh, JC on Kenef. That's the section left to do. Uh, technically, it's one of the other engineers' <laughs> checks, but John can assist with that. Yeah, as well. they just they just put the last batch of asphalt was a couple of days ago, right? Yeah. And on the one big section that wasn't asphalted, and that, and that was the day they closed that yard down. So we can put cold batch if there's any more bottles that come up, but there's nothing that can be done permit in like like a hot batch or nothing right now. No, so, I know. I'm working these. If we could you know, smooth it out so people don't have to go on a one way. Because I seen it today when I was coming actually. Oh. I actually had to stop because everybody's coming in front of me to get to. Yeah, that's why I have one, that, one side uh, cleaned and then we're going to have the other side cleaned and then I'm going back to paddles. We're, we're also trying really hard to get to that in the spring rather than the fall. That's right. That's, that's true. I've got funding mechanism through there. So we're looking for a, a June bid on that. That's. 85% funded through MDOT. The complete replacement, though, right? Whole the complete, complete replacement. replacement. That's correct. Right. So it'll be brand new once the summer hit at the end of the summer here. We're trying to get a jump on it for this this next year rather than towards the end. You know, just you know, make it in a way where people are. It's more right. Yeah, we'll so we'll take a look to, at it with John and we'll figure out. Right. Wait. Sounds good. Thanks. Mr. Chair. Yes. Someone go ahead. Uh, related to the 2023 service lines, um, I, I see you completed uh, 319, excuse me, 319 out of 370. So did you meet the state requirements? Yes, so the state requirements 366. Actually to date, um, per the meeting we had today when I looked at it, I think it was 352 or 54 we were at to date. Mm -hmm. So I th we had figured by... Tomorrow we were, no, 365. Tomorrow we meet the 366. Yeah, so in the next day or two, we were going to meet compliance with the state. Okay. So yeah. we're, we're going to, the con contractor is going to continue working through the end of the year, so we know we're going to hit even more than that. Sure. But we would definitely hit compliance. I have another request, and I know you, you have been working uh, diligently and trying to do uh, best you can to get the city's um, improvement. Uh, I, you know, I ad advocated the constructions, the construction for the city since I got into the city. Uh, Eddie Ware project, the road project, street projects. Uh, that was one of my main goals when I got elected or before that I campaigned. Uh, I would strongly recommend that you complete in time. I know it's a difficult thing to do, but it's the city is so density, so congested, and then the traffic is increasing. Because I, I, I work on Conant for 20 years, and I it's school time and other time. So when they leave the barrels and cones and then unfinished job, it makes this new driver, new immigrant people to drive around so hard. Uh, you know, and, uh, and so if you get this job precisely, and you know, like. Um, Councilman Khalil said that the Kenif, uh, there's part hole and the things are unfinished. Drivers are going over to the other side to go around and get to their destination. It will cause an accident. So it's my humble request to have this thing done precisely and on time and be mindful about the people around. Yes, sir. Thank we'll, you. We'll probably hit social media better and probably put out maps of what's going to be happening in the city, but. I can tell you next year is going to be hell with traffic. I mean, you think this was bad. <laughs> Times it by five because I'm going full steam ahead with a lot of projects. Well, you go beyond the yeah, next year. We literally are doing five times as many of that service lines. I mean, we're literally going to be starting $30 million worth of work next year. So yeah. it's going to be something else. But you want to accommodate, you want to make sure people can go around uh, their house, their business, you know. 
we, 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 we got a car, we don't have a subway. <laughs> we don't have a fuel <laughs> line. <laughs> we got a car, we, you know, or bike lanes. So I hope I see you out there more than uh, this year because you're going to be doing more work. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. right. Thank you. And since we are doing more <coughs> that line service placement, which uh, costs so much money, but uh, people do not realize yeah. that uh, important job that you do, uh, if, you, if it results in, in making the street messed up, then people get angry. They don't care about what happened under the ground yeah. if you mess up above the ground. So we, again, ask that when you do the lead line service replacement, make sure that the street is, is done. And, you know, leave it in a good shape for the drivers. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Um, that's it. We hope to see more alleys and side streets come next year. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay, so do we have any additions or deletions to the agenda? Mr. Chair? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor Putin. Go ahead. I'd like to remove one of the resolution under the new business. Uh, F like a Frank. Resolution number 2023184 for approving the honorary naming of Holbrook Street between the Buffalo Street and Central Green Street as a Palestinian Avenue. So you want to remove it, table yeah. it? Yes. We want to remove from this agenda today. Okay. That's a motion to remove. Do we have support for that? Second. Okay. Then we have to vote on removing it? Yes. Mr. Chair. We can discuss it. Well, I'm one sorry. at a time. I, I know. Okay. All right. I think we remove, we remove, we don't need discussion. You don't need discussion, but you still have to... But I will explain uh, my space, why I'm removing that. That's why I saved time. Okay. <clears throat> what do we have? No, we need a vote now. <coughs> well, yes. you don't want to discuss? No. Okay, yeah. Okay. Anybody else want I mean, to talk? if anyone wants to discuss... No? They so, can. If not, then we can go ahead and vote. Vote? Okay. Uh, Councilman Hassan. Yes. Councilman Asmiri. Uh, yes. Councilman Musa. Yes. Councilman Mahmoud. Yes. Councilman Chowdhury. No. Councilman Rafai. No. Mr. Mayor, uh, resolution 2023-184 removed from new business F. Okay. Okay. Um, the next uh, section is actually I, need, I still need i need an approval on the amended agenda yep. so um, i'd like to make the motion i'll Thank second <coughs> we vote. uh councilman hassan yes councilman osmeri uh yes councilman mahmoud yes councilman chowdhury this is we're voting on the amended uh, agenda agenda yep yes councilman musa yes councilman rafai yes Mr. Mayor, uh, the agenda approval is approved. Thank you. Uh, we move now to the public comment. <coughs> um, I have Veronica Smith. Three minutes, Veronica. Okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Veronica Smith, and I was the one that hosted the Juneteenth celebration here in the city. And um, I want—I came here tonight to thank the mayor for his support and Councilman Knight. Thank you for your support and your extra help and clean up at the end. And I also want to thank you, my dear, for your donation. But I want to let you guys know that I was sent for to go to Chicago where they had a, a taste fest. Well, Coco Fest. And they sent for a round trip for four friends of mine, my family, whatever. And they gave me this award. Aww. And this was me doing the Juneteenth. And can I read it to you guys? Mm -hmm. It said, The Journey for Justice Alliance and the Ken Kenwood or Oakland Community Organization present this proud Braze Award to Fatima Smith in appreciation of your dedication to preserving the history of Hamtramck. Thank you for being the engine behind Michigan's first ever Juneteenth celebration. So. And hopefully, 
hopefully, we're going to do it again, June 19th, and hopefully you guys can come and participate with us because we had a good time. Thank, Thank you, guys. Wonderful. Congratulations. Miss, uh, just like you may me here, I um, actually, I marched from Sarah Grid uh, Park all the way to Veterans Park, and I also contributed, you know, and I'd like to do that again uh, next year. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Goodmayer. I uh, admire from. I'm just befuddled. I'm just so disappointed that you just pulled that from the agenda. Okay. Uh, but anyways, I'd like to com uh, commend uh, Naeem on his victory of being a candidate councilman for four years. He managed to go through four years of uh, attacks and insults and Islamophobia. And from some of the people in our community, and he remained uh, respectful and courteous to everyone through the whole thing. He also didn't get censored, he didn't get fired, and he didn't quit when it got difficult. He remained, he remained available and open to meetings with his con constituents always. He always voted his conscience, never became an opportunist by changing his vote to benefit himself. He wasn't divisive, and he didn't play power politics like it's going on right now. He remained true to his principles. He tr he's trusting and honest, down to earth, and he served the people well. And I think, Naeem, you have every right to leave this chamber with your head high and feeling like you, you felt served your constituents well. Thank you for your service. Now, as far as naming the Palestine Street, this could have been a courageous and uh, creative action on your part. And you know, showing deep respect to people who lived and suffered injustice for decades, and now they face genocide and extinction from their own land. Now, don't let anybody stop you. Zionism is a political ideology. Many Jews are not Zionists. Although they're trying to criminalize opponents of Zionist racist policies by charging them with anti Semitism, don't fall for this. There is real anti Semitism, and we have to fight against that. But Israel seems more intent on fighting anti-Zionism than anti-Semitism. I have to ask for one more minute. And now they're trying hopelessly to try to merge the two. They're not the same. This city was one of the first to call for a ceasefire. You should be proud of that. And now you could have been the first to name a street after Palestine. You should be ashamed of what you just voted for. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Rukaya Abdurrahman, is that what it is? Yes, that's me. You have to speak at the end, though. Uh, at the end, what do you mean? At the end of the meeting or the last person at this public comment? Is there a public comment at the end of the meeting as well? Yes. Yes, you did? Sure, no problem. Nope, not anymore. Nope, not anymore. Uh, Tobin Sterrett, Sterrett? Is that how you pronounce it? Welcome. Three minutes, sir. Good evening. Um, Good evening. Been uh, fairly new. Uh, this is my first uh, city council meeting right here. I didn't mean to get down here, and uh, I had a, uh, a friend, Del Meyer, also gave me an additional impetus to uh, to come down here right here. So I didn't have anything prepared. I just wanted to say I uh, go Bill and in uh, my disappointment. Uh, at, uh, at the removal of uh, Resolution 184, which I would have, uh, I would have supported and appreciate uh, that uh, that it got on to the agenda in the first place. Uh, I'm increasing. I'm face to face with people I know and I don't know right there who are going to be touched by uh, the uh, unspeakable events that are going on. In Gaza, there too, and I thought even if it's just a symbolic action, right there, it means that uh, somebody has not forgotten them. There, so thank you for your time. Thank you, Tony. Uh, Dr. Allen. Good 
Good evening. Assalamu alaikum to those and greetings. <coughs> I came here this evening for a very special resolution that was in the agenda. 2023-184 naming a street between Buffalo and uh, what is the other? St. Albert. St. Albert of mm -hmm. on Holbrook. Anyway, the resolution get uh, moved without any discussion. Uh, we would appreciate if there is a discussion to hear why it was moved, but anyway, you have the power to do. Uh, the situation we are going through, it is very unfortunate. It's just uh, whatever I could do, I could do. It's a small town, a small city, we live, we have bread and butter. If we could donate five bucks, we've donated five bucks. If I had two chance to donate a million, I would do, donate a million. You have the mayor of Antramic, mayor pro team, and all these council members I'm looking at here. Whether whatever it is the case, when the whole world is watching this, uh, you know, this Zionist movement, and let me be clear, it is not as anti-Semitic, anti-Semitism, as Bill said, it's a political term, but I hope that I command the city of Antramic to be a standing, and really standing for the brother and sister in Palestine, in Gaza. Someday make sure you do that. You have a chance to do it, and that's what it is. We are suffering, and every day I cannot sleep. You know, and I've been saying, like, whether you were a Muslim or human being, when you look at these uh, pictures, uh, look at these videos, children are crying, it's all in my mind. I don't know what's going on with you. But when I heard that Hamtramik is about to put a name as a Palestine, that's given me some hope that, yes, I could donate five cents, not five million. So, yes, I can do something in Hamtramik. So I will ask the mayor for the Muhammad Kamrul Hassan, Muhammad Sumeri, Abu Hamad Musa, Khalil al Naim Chaudhary, and Muhit Mahmoud. If you have the chance, Please don't hesitate, don't shy away. And that's not going to become entire world that, hey, why have Trump did this? We have Bangladesh Avenue. Do Palestine Avenue. Anyway, I want to make one comment about uh, on the outgoing uh, city councilman, I am sure I have personal differences. I have, uh, you know, issue with him. But what a young man would have served the city. And uh, last night he had a appreciation after defeating, I command that. I congratulate you, Naim Chaudhuri. Keep up the good work, and that's what it is meant. Like, you know, failure of the plots of success. So there are many avenues, many windows. So uh, I really have seen last night, when you say that it is my appreciation evening, you know, after the defeat, that's mean a lot. City of Hampton it needs a leader like you. Though we fight in the behind the door or in the street, but we need somebody who will speak the truth and stay fast. God bless. Hamtramic, and I hope that Hamtramic would be the first city to put a name of a state, Palestine, because it came from you guys. I'm a citizen. Thank you. Thank God you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, that's all for public comment. All right, thank you. And um, <coughs> we will move now to the <coughs> consent agenda, and this is approved and single motion with no discussion. We have approval of minutes from the November 28, 2023 Registry Council meeting. Uh, the approval from voice register date ending December 12, 2023. C, approval of pre approved expenditure date ending December 11, 2023. D, resolution 2023 176 approving boards and commission appointments. E resolution 2023-177 approving the 2024 regular city council meeting schedule. F resolution 2023-178 approving council's request for additional funds to the early repaving project. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Um, all right. So we're done with that. We move to the public hearing, which we had. Uh, Sure. Resolution 2023-165B, approving public hearing and second reading of Fantram Zoning Ordinance, text amendments to title uh, 15, land usage, chapter 15. Motion. Second. second. Mr. Mayor, I have Ms. Faulkner here to uh, <coughs> speak on it, if you so wish. Rana, can you bring up the report, the longer sure. PDF? Um, 
think report on proposed changes. I have report proposed zoning amendment yeah, 2023. Definitely. Okay, so just to summarize, uh, I was here four weeks ago and talked about some of these zoning changes that were proposed. Um, and I just want to go through some of those in more detail and really explain some of the benefits of them. Um, under A, um, which reads an amendment that allows <coughs> additional by right site plan review applications to be processed administratively. If you could zoom in a little bit to A. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. By city staff. So basically one way this amendment streamlines the process is that for building renovations that are changing less than 20% of the footprint, like the exterior footprint of the building, such as an addition or a demo, this site plan review can be done administratively. That means they don't have to go to any meetings, they just work directly with us and then directly with the building department. We currently have a lower threshold for that so it just means more people could go through that administrative only process, and that's what part A means. What this does not mean is that new buildings on a vacant lot or any major changes, if a building is doubling size, um, they would still come to a meeting. So it wouldn't be administrative for those type of things. But you know, some of these smaller renovations would be processed first by community and economic development staff and then go straight to the building department. So that's what A means. Uh, B was removed uh, last time, and then C is an amendment to change the minimum floor area in a single family dwelling unit from 800 to 600 square feet. So this really applies to the residential lot sale. A lot of people ask, you know, what are the specifications on these new vacant lots? Can I build a small house? Can I do a, you know, different kinds of houses? Currently, any house that you build has to be a minimum of 800 square feet. Now, a lot of people want to build very large houses, but there are people on the other side of the spectrum who want to build very small houses. And so this just opens up the opportunity for smaller houses. The, it could be as small as 600 square feet, which is quite a small house, but is honestly gaining national popularity to have small houses. So um, Amendment C is to change the minimum floor area in a single family dwelling unit from 800 square, uh, I'm sorry, actually it would be uh, D here. Um, an amendment to change the minimum floor area in an apartment house dwelling unit from 700 to 500 square feet. Um, I actually brought the zoning map. I don't have it up there. But this is just for the residential district, which is, which is the yellow, uh, all of the yellow. Um, it also does apply a lot to the residential lot sale. Um, we had a proposal where someone wanted to do multiple units on a residential lot that we are selling, um, but it was denied because the units were smaller than 700 square feet. And so currently, you know, this would allow, for example, someone to come in, build a four unit with basically studios, meaning 500 square foot apartments would be the minimum size. Currently, all of these units in the yellow district have to be at least 700. So um, that person did not want to deal with the hassle of going to the ZBA. I mean, they could have potentially gone to the ZBA, but $750, you know, not everybody wants to go through those delays in that process. <coughs> um, I also believe that there's quite a demand for smaller units as well. Um, they're more affordable, and it just opens up more housing options in the city. Um, the next one, uh, E, is an amendment to allow apartment houses in C2 which is the multi-use district. So C2 on this map is the pink area. It's essentially Holbrook, Kniff, and Conant. Okay, <clears throat> it doesn't include Joseph Capo, but it includes all of our other commercial corridors, and it's highlighted in pink on our city zoning <coughs> map. Um, this amendment would open the door for multi-family apartments. We have received quite a few site plan requests and zoning questions <coughs> over the phone and by email. Um, for apartment buildings on some of our vacant land. These have all gotten stuck, and I'm not, in, I'm not talking about the residential zone anymore, I'm talking about the corridors. These have all gotten stuck because the city currently requires that all new apartment buildings 
be mixed use. That means there has to be a storefront on the bottom level. It's 100% required. That is great in some areas, like in the center of the shopping districts, but other areas, such as the very south part of Conant or very far on the edges of the city, there's really not a demand for shopping on the first level down there. Um, for example, across from Z-Box, I don't know if you can know where Z-Box is on Conant, but just that south part of Conant, there's not a lot of shopping happening and there has been interest in just having apartments down there, but that's not currently allowed. So to make things worse, adding commercial shopping to the bottom floor of every new building is expensive and it adds many new layers of fire code regulations as well, and so that makes it even more expensive. So this amendment would allow in C2 apartments not to have commercial on the first floor. You could still do it if you want, it just would not be a requirement. <coughs> um, the last one, F, is for accessory dwelling units. Uh, these are often known as granny flats, um, like secondary units on your property. More and more cities are allowing more types of accessory dwelling units. Um, a little bit of history, most U.S. cities outlawed ADUs, they're called ADUs, for about 70 years from the 1950s onward. Um, but now more and more cities are seeing the need um, to add them back into the community because they have economic benefits, it opens up more housing opportunities, um, and it increases the housing supply. So these units would be in the back of your house only. You can't put an ADU in the front of your house, it would have to be in your backyard. Um, they would need to meet all building code and zoning standards. They would need to have a kitchen, a bathroom, a sleeping area, and they would need to be connected to water and wastewater. So they're not that easy to build, but someone could choose to add a second unit behind their house. And there's a long list of specifications in the zoning proposal. Um, overall, I believe all of these amendments would benefit both the economy and the community. I believe it would help with the residential lot sale. It would open up the door for more of the vacant land um, on our corridors to become apartments. It would add to the housing supply and it would add to housing options within the city of Hamtramck. And then last, based on some public comment that we received and lots of questions, I just want to clear up some confusion related to the one amendment that was removed a couple weeks ago. So if you could go to the Planning Commission so plan website. Oh, no, actually okay. the Planning Commission website. And you can just scroll down a little bit and stop right there. Thank you. Oh, a little up. Okay, good, good, thank you. Um, so the Planning Commission's mission is to promote, coordinate, and facilitate the involvement of people in the long-range planning and vision of the community, and to improve economic development and quality of life. Um, the Planning Commission is appointed by the Mayor and City Council. Uh, in addition, the Mayor himself and Councilmember Altsmiri is on the Planning Commission. So the City Council determines who sits on the Planning Commission, and there's representation by two City by two of these members on the Planning Commission. Um, those of you who were here for the RRC presentation last week know that 70 communities in Michigan have reached certification already. Uh, these include Novi, Southfield, Ferndale, Rochester Hills, Roseville, <coughs> East Point, Farmington, Dearborn, and uh, many other cities near us. In terms of the certification process, we are about 80% there. That means we've met almost all of the standards. Um, you might also remember the marketing assistance that we would get, like the Novi um, document that I handed out, um, if we did reach certification, um, and the grants that we could then start applying for as well. Um, Council Member Rafai had asked, do we have to change the process in order to reach certification? Uh, we do have to change the process. Um, I do want to talk about what administrative approval means, though, because there was a lot of questions that I've gotten about this. So. Um, if you could now go to that other sheet. Mm -hmm. There's a RRC one. Okay, so um, I've heard it said a couple times, you know, perhaps we could have the, C the CED department, which is my department, do administrative approval, and then we could just bring it to council for a final stamp of approval. Um, it, was, it was said during public comment that RRC, if you were here two weeks ago, it was said during public comment that RRC allows administrative approval and that we shouldn't make any changes. So that's 50% correct. RRC does allow administrative approval, but administrative approval means there would be no meetings for any site plans. So it wouldn't come to council. It would go 
from CED to the building department and they'd get a building permit. There would be no meetings whatsoever. So if you go, so these two are out of compliance and if you go down to the bottom, there's one page. These are two examples of in compliance. So we do have options as a city if we want to pursue certification and these are the two options. So we could do the one on the left, which is what we had originally proposed, site plan staff review, which is my department, planning commission, that's what was removed two <coughs> weeks ago or four weeks ago, and then we go to the building department. Admin approval is on the far right. As you see, that's a very short process. Goes from my department directly to the building department and there's no meetings. So both of those are okay with RRC. Um, at some point, I would hope that we would choose as a you know, council and planning commission to pick one of these options. It doesn't have to be today, but I've just gotten a lot of talk about we could do admin approval. Admin approval is the right side and it means no meetings whatsoever. Unless you need a variance, you still have to go to a meeting. But if your site plan meets the ordinance, you just get approved. You don't have any, any meetings whatsoever. So, um, Ron, if you could go back to the actually the um, the resolution, which has a summary of the. Do you want the amended resolution? Yeah, the amended resolution. Thank you. <coughs> so this is the amended resolution uh, with the removed amendment. Um, those would be the five changes. Um, I do recommend that council pass the amendments in this proposal for all the reasons that I talked about today. Um, today or some other day, consider adding back <coughs> in the proposed site plan approval changes. It will help us reach certification quickly. Uh, we are 80% of the way there. And uh, 70 com communities in Michigan have already completed this process. So, thank you. And I'm here for any questions. Mr. Chair, I have a question. Uh, the, uh, I mean the oh, which one do you want? The summary. Uh, okay. So, the last one, uh, we're supposed to, everything has to come to the city council. That was the discussion we have done. That's how, well, how does no, current... Well, no, 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 I very clear remember that. So upon that statement, it was previously amended a statement exactly same or you have done something changed? Here, I'll show you the first resolution. Okay. Okay. I can show you them both side by side. It's, Hold it's on. as amended, Council. Okay. She's just asking if you bring it back. No, no, no. We need an amendment. We had a discussion done. And that's the one up. So here's the, the original one. Okay. So go, can you go, please? I got a two word bothering me. This is the original one, amended one. Okay. okay, B. No, no, amended one. This is, this is the one you guys changed. Who this is the new one. Who was removed? We, just, we had a just discussion having. This is the one is going final? This is the You're final right. one today. Mm -hmm. But the other, the old one was still uploaded on there in Miss. Mrs. No, no, she, well, she was explaining to us. It was there, yeah. Mm -hmm. She showed the old one. That was the original reference. report. Okay. She so why is it showing all the site plan has to come by the city hall, or city council meeting, and nothing is there? Because That's, we already have it like that. That wouldn't be a change. That's what is not going to change. It's going to be like that one. If you want to change, it's not going to come back. If they want to change, it's not going to come back to the planning commission. They're going to go to the building department. Yes, hold on. All the site plan has to approve by the city council. Yes. That was the discussion now. Okay, so, so we discussed last time the, the reason for the you know administrative mm -hmm. things process that doesn't have to wait a whole month until we meet or the planning commission to meet. Right. If, if they ask for something missing they take the time. person can bring it the next day. Doesn't have he doesn't have to wait a whole month until we meet. Okay. So that's the and and if there's something new, it's still gonna come to the to the meeting to okay. the city council. But to get things done faster, we discussed in the planning commission. I think this is the best way okay. because people complain about waiting. Why do I have I have the thing at home? 
why do I have to wait until next planning commission? It may be canceled next. It may be canceled the next time, and then he has to wait two months. Another month. So that that's not very efficient for the people. And the other amendments here is just to allow people to build some housing units that are smaller, yeah, so we can bring down. people, you know, to the city. Okay. Uh, I think we discussed in the planning commission. I don't think it's a problem. We still have the authority to, you know, uh, approve at the end here or reject things that are complicated and the council, yeah. the council meeting anyway. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think it's uh, the, the whole planning commission approved this, and uh, it's not a bad idea. Yeah, so I think it's, a, it's bring more option for people to how they want to build their house. I mean, it's not taking away everything; it's just adding up more options for people. So that's not a bad idea, I think. It's yeah. So um, some people are building in the backyard now. I see some houses, <laughs> yeah. which is you know, to just bring more people to the city. More. Okay. More okay. So right. I think we. Uh, you vote, no, public actually, public. that's public comment. So it's a yeah, public yeah. hearing, so yeah. we're not ready to vote yet. Yeah. All right. Uh, so can we open? Did we vote to open the hearing yet? No. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, we motion to vote. Oh. Yeah. No. Need to close. No. Uh, Dr. Allen wants to speak. Anybody want to speak? Yeah. It's public. Public hearing. Thank you so much, Deb. I mean. The administrative decision-making process is smoother, but at the same time, if you keep the council as accountable and in the loop, if needed any immediate or anything go through, you can do a phone call or you can just do an email or immediate respond with the council too. I have seen that 78 uh, community has done it, except us, and there are many other cities uh, out there. We have 80%, 20% missing. So going through the whole certification, uh, building, processing, uh, city of Antramic is a small city. And the department uh, uh, running by the commission, uh, we could give the whole authority to the commission, that's great, but I would suggest that as a citizen, also have the council members be, you know, taking their, uh, you know, uh, okay or not because the council members are directly voted uh, by the city citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. L. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, that's all for public comment. Okay, then we need a motion to motion. All second. second. Huh? And there's 814. This was a closed yeah, here. Ready so, to vote? Yes. Uh, actually? We need to open yes. this to discuss. A motion to open. Second. <laughs> any, any, any further discussion? Just any discussion? I mean, we already, already discussed. Uh, Councilman Hassan. Yes. Councilman Asamiri. Uh, yes. Councilman Chowdhury. Yes. Councilman Rafai. Yes. Councilman Musa. Yes. Councilman Mahmoud. Yes. Mr. Mayor, would you like to vote on this? Um, yes. You voting yes? Yes. Mr. Mayor, resolution 2023-165B. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right, so at, at this point, I would like to suspend the rules and ask council members to reconsider the resolution we removed. I thought about it. It's going to be really, going to have really negative impact by the community as it seems. People will be very disappointed. The other side, you are not going to gain their support no matter what you do. So I think I, I ask you nicely and uh, with respectfully that you consider it when you're back. Because I don't want to see on the news that Hamtramck City Council mm -hmm. disapproved naming of a state of Palestine. That would look bad. That right. It will look like we don't support Palestine. While the fact that we do, and uh, I, I wouldn't care about what the other side will say because no matter what we do, they are not going to support us. Mr. Chair, yes. then I have a statement. Go ahead. I thought I was real okay. So Hamtramck City, a street name assigned by the, the country people, uh, um, lots of country people, example, Poland, Yemen, Bangladesh. Most of them, uh, the 
we have to do and we did it. Some other street name we assign as the greatest people. If it is, uh, what is name? Yasir Arafat, I don't have no issue. Still, I don't have no issue. So, so street name we did the, the country wise. There is not too many Lebanese in living this city. So that is the, my first clarification. Second clarification, only the hand traumatic did in the United States for the Palestine. The rally we had done under the leadership and Mr. Councilman College Rafai leadership, it was the very strong and number one rally in the Michigan. And we are the one first brought the resolution in the city council, ceasefire is in Hamtramck's. We have enough love for the Palestine. And we have enough stand with the Palestine. And we will stand with the Palestine rest of the life if they study their roles. So it is not the one somebody tried to um, modify, modify or and just try to tell me to what I have to do. It's not. What I was doing, it is in my moral. Yes, this is the statue we've been following in Hamtramck city street name. If somebody want to bring the Yasir Arafat name, I will approve it today. So the population of the Hamtramck is the diverse country and the, the country population, how many persons live here and we are doing for that. We have done for Dr. Abdul Karim Al Ghazali. We have done for uh, uh, former mayor, Dr. Karen Mayaski. We might go to for one of our council members who has done a lot of sacrifice for this city. Okay, so that is the for that based on or that criteria we are judging, we are approving again. For the Palestine, nobody did more than Hamtramck. The people who is speaking here, some of them, I want to go back to the 1995. I still have the paper who wrote something in the newspaper against who. So, and a lot of people, those kinds of people change and showing the too much sympathy for uh, name only, still name. We can do better than that, and we did it. So this is the, my clarification, and this is my statement, and we will fight, uh, uh, stay with the Palestine, and against the, uh, the, the, the human uh, killing, kids killing, even though it's Joe Biden, we're going to be against that. So this is my clear statement. There is not the Mr. Mayor this side or that side. There is the statement is clear. I stay with my principle. And how we did previously, still we're doing the practice. For the Palestine, if I have to die, for the I will die. That kind of a statement. Nobody has a more love than Palestine by mouth than us. Thank right. you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Portem. So I want to clarify some things. Uh, first of all, um, I think Palestine is very, way more important than Yasser Arafat and any other still person. Uh, second, I think it's the most just and fair case in the world today, and we, we don't have to have Palestinian people living in Hamtramck to show our support for Palestine. I think Hamtramck's role now is in the spotlight, and we care about the whole world, not just our residents here. So I, I don't want to see Hamtramck in the cover page of the newspaper rejecting the naming of a, a street to support Palestine at this moment, because I think people will be disappointed not only in Hamtramck, but all around the United States and maybe all around the world. Uh, I think, I thought about it, and I think that we don't want to disappoint our residents. And it's a symbolic thing. I know it's not going to change anything, but uh, it's a symbolic thing that Hamtramck is stay with justice, get us to oppression, and uh, I, I, that's how I think about it. Because right now I can see that when we walk out, social media will be attacking us. 
and I don't want that to happen. But if we walk out with whatever we decided so far, uh, I, I don't think we're going to get compliment from anywhere else. Uh, so I still ask uh, Mr. Chair, Council Member, to reconsider this. And I respect your opinion. Um, I know you support Palestine, um, and we want to translate that, interpret that into actions. Mr. Chair, yes, go on. Uh, if I may uh, make a motion, so I'd like to make a motion to bring back. It's a motion to reconsider. Oh, reconsider? Yeah, motion to reconsider. Motion to reconsider from, from, from us. Not from, <laughs> not from no board, from the yes board. Correct. You cannot do that. Oh. Mr. Chair, yes, so yes, since I respect right. the, from the yes side, from For the. Only somebody that voted to. Yes. Somebody already that voted yes. Yeah. Cannot be the only one to do a motion. Right, right. So I'm making another statement. Okay. I respect uh, your discussion, and and also yeah. I I respect one thing, uh, the the what you saying, media will attack us, and media will take this one different way. The, you convince me that one. Okay. I was uh, I was I, w I made my statement, but the when you uh, uh, mentioned me. And I know maybe some text messages also coming. I understand. And also, so when you say one thing, it convinces me to bring it back. So, so I like to bring it back, that resolution uh, under the new business. Thank, Thank you. So he's doing a motion to reconsider. Do yeah. you a second? Second. Uh, no, only somebody who voted yes. Yeah. Second. Put the same. Second. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, to reconsider means it's back F. on the agenda? Yes, yeah, yeah, back in the agenda. Yeah. Because suspend the law and then and we have to go back. Right. <coughs> so do we have to vote to Mr. Back? Yeah. yeah. No yeah. discussion? Yes, yeah, so yeah. Mm -hmm. We cannot do this kind any discussion um, anymore. You can discuss it when you're voting. When the resolution yeah. come back. We'll right. get there. For yes. Can we vote? Yeah. For? Yeah. Councilman Hassan? Yes. Councilman Rafai? Yes. Councilman Moussa? Yes. Councilman Chaudhry? Yes. Councilman Asmiri? Uh, yes. Councilman Mahmoud? Well, I'm standing on my points now. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, guys. I mean, the resolution is back for discussion. So we have discussion? It's no. back to new no, we'll business. Get there. It's back to the new business, and I... Thank you. We will hear from every council member when we get there. But I do thank you for uh, reconsidering. That's why I love this city council, because they are very flexible and supportive and understand. So buy, thank you so much. Who buy the dinner tonight? <laughs> <laughs> so where you will buy it? <laughs> <laughs> I said, OK. I I said, it. Mr. Atomi, we have to have a little discussion about it. Yeah, I'm going there. Uh, you didn't. Uh, I need to discuss. No, it's not amended no, 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 yet. No, 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 no. It's back in there. We'll get there. So we'll okay. we have to accept the amendment again because we put it back. What do you mean? The yeah. resolution. We already accepted. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's already good. It's already back now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we're going to get to it as F. Yeah. So we'll just start so with A now. So it's back in place now. Correct. Then, all right. Thank you so much. Um, now yes. we start with the new business, and we have A. Resolution 2023-179, awarding Hennessy Engineers and Corporation the construction services for Prescott Water Main. Motion. Second. Mr. Mayor, I have Tiffany and John here. If, uh, if there's any questions on this, pretty cut and dry, though. Good <laughs> evening. Um, so this is for the Prescott Water Main. So we put um, that out to bid. Uh, as you'll see on the next item, Bidigary uh, Construction was the lowest low bidder on that. So we received three bids that day. Correct. I don't remember. Um, so we had three contractors bid on that project. Um, this is for our construction services so we can oversee the construction and project administration of the construction work. Okay. Any questions for them? Any discussion? No, sir. All right, we can go ahead and Councilman Rapai? Yes. Councilman Chowdhury? Yes. Councilman Al Samiri? Yes. Councilman Hassan? Yes. Councilman Mahmoud? Yes. Councilman Musa? Yes. Mr. Mayor, Resolution 2023-179 approved. Thank you. 
Next one is resolution 2023-180, awarding uh, Bidger Contractors Incorporation the Prescott Water Main Project. Motion. Second. Mr. Mayor, this is the companion to the one you guys just voted on. Okay. But so it, it is as a large number. <laughs> This is the award of the contract of the actual contractor who won the bid. Yeah. So, yeah, so funding, a, uh, I think bids yeah. came in a little over a million dollars. Yeah. That, um, yeah. So we do have a $795,000 ARPA grant that's yeah. being used to yeah. offset a lot of that cost. So the rest of the cost will come from the water and sewer fund. Thank you. Um, but like I said, three bids, competitively bid, they were the little bid. Well, I don't know what the, it completes the loop too. Yeah, so what, what it is is we're doing replacing the water main along Prescott and looping that into the Kenneth project. We had a stub, a 10 inch stub come out, um, water main stub come out, so we'll connect it into that so it completes a good loop there. And then new lead service lines, or service, not new lead. Mm -hmm. We're replacing the lead service lines. <laughs> 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 it's a long day. Yeah. <laughs> Prescott is not all the way in Hampshire. <coughs> Prescott goes all the way to Buffalo. There's uh, Ellery, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah, so we're going from Conan, Conan to Ellery. There's and making a right. And making a right up to, to Kenya. So we're just doing what's on our city side. There's three houses on the north side that are city of Detroit. Correct. Those are still serviced by the city of Detroit. We're not touching anything over there. Okay. Yeah, we're going to make sure that. All right, thank so, you. Thank you. We can go ahead and vote. Councilman Chowdhury? Yes. Councilman Musa? Yes. Councilman Mahmoud? Yes. Councilman Hassan? Yes. Councilman Al Samiri? Uh, yes. Councilman Rafai? Yes. Mr. Mayor, Resolution 2023 180 approved. Thank you. The next one is Resolution 2023 181 approving additional funds to the lead service line replacement project. Motion. I make a motion. Second. All right, discussion. Same <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> so this is to replace lead service lines. This is to go back out or to go out to bid for. Um, we're looking at using 1.5 million. One point five million. Is that what this one's for? Yeah. The 1.5 million um, from the water and sewer funds, so we can get additional lead service lines completed. Now I do have another question, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. So will this 1.5 million will complete the lead service? Let's, uh, Service line, or will you be asking the like game for all? No, no, no. 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 We have over five thousand lead service. So we have over five thousand over five thousand lead service lines that need to be replaced throughout the city. It's close um, to fifty million dollars. Yeah. So this is just this is just to get another contractor in here. We're just trying to get more service lines completed. Um, so with this, it's so if I can just uh, uh, yes. interject on this. Sure. Uh, we have to replace six thousand lines. We have done maybe 400 so far, 800 so far. So we've got another 5,000 left. So we're not talking about 1.5 million that will cover everything. It'll take a lot more money to cover it. What we're trying to do is we're trying to speed up the implementation of these replacements. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why we're trying to use more money from the water fund. And we are applying for grants for uh, lead service light uh, replacements uh, uh, from uh, the state and uh, other sources. Uh, this 1.5 million will basically be covering just next year's plan that we're doing. Th this with is also some, with some of them. It's still, one of the one of the yeah. pockets that we're it's trying to just one of the areas. This is also a little tactical that we can get bids going for a second contractor right now as we're waiting for some of the grants to finalize. That was actually what I was trying to yeah. so, clarify so, because yeah. you know how many we have probably voted many times in the past and oh, we, we, continue to, we continue to do this for the next <coughs> five, at least five years. We we have to be careful on bidding and when we bid for a lot of these grants, they're very specific and when they come and whatnot. And if we commit some of our funds towards it, we can get a secondary contractor working in the city rolling already. But at the same time we cannot do anything on any of the projects if the grant is supposed to come in. So until the grant is approved, you cannot, you're not supposed, otherwise they will not pay for it. Because it's a know, tactical move. So the, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get in more contractors in, in place, instead of just one person 
doing uh, this project, more than one contractor doing it so that we can speed up uh, the number of uh, lead service lines uh, we need to replace. And what this will do is, as we do, and this is obviously the underground work, so this will then, you know, increase the pace of our, you know, alley replacements as well as road replacements uh, in future. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, we can go ahead and Councilman Rafai? Yes. Councilman Chowdhury? Yes. Councilman Al Samiri? Uh, yes. Councilman Musa? Yes. Councilman Mahmoud? Yes. Councilman Hassan? Yes. Mr. Mayor, Resolution 2023-181 approved. All right, thank you. Next one is Resolution 2023-182, approving the contract award for ALPR camera purchase to Flux Make a motion. Second. All right. So, so, I'm, I'm, sorry, sorry. Chief. <laughs> I'm here again. <laughs> Last time I voted yes. <laughs> okay, so just I'll give you um, a rundown on a few things. Um, you know, we've talked about statistically that crime is on the rise on a national level. Um, I've got some examples from the police department of some recent things that the, the flock license plate reader cameras could have helped us with. And we've had at least seven hit and run accidents just in this past month alone where vehicle descriptions, um, but we did not have plates available. We've had some B&Es of businesses, so breaking and enterings, um, where we've had getaway vehicles that were seen with descriptions with no license plate. We've had an indecent exposure case where a male was exposing himself to a female. Then we had a good vehicle description, but no license plate. We've had an armed robbery, larceny of porch packages with the holidays coming, the recent drive-by shooting on Kniff that we discussed, and in the past, some of our homicides um, where the vehicles involved that flock uh, license plate readers would have been very helpful. <clears throat> as long as I've been here, the police department has been behind the times in technology. We didn't have computers when I started here. You know, lack of funding and things like that have really kept us um, kind of behind the times. We're finally starting to get there with body cameras and, and other in-car cameras and technology things. Um, we have the funding, and I think that this is an excellent tool to help with the police department. I know that there were some concerns that were expressed um, about things that these cameras could be used for in the public's opinion, things like that. So we've had um, some items that I've addressed that um, internal controls will be put in place in our policy. We'll work with the city attorney to make sure that the policy meets all of the, those standards, <coughs> including a 30-day retention period on the information. All system access will require a valid reason, and that reason will be stored indefinitely. It will not be used for immigration purposes, traffic enforcement, any type of harassment or intimidation, um, any usage based on protective classes, and no personal use. The data will be owned by the Hampshire Police Department and will not be sold to any third parties. Random, random audits will be done on the system, and all misuse will be subject to discipline. I've got some examples that I provided a letter from the uh, Dearborn Police Chief that um, I shared with all of you about their technology and they've had Flock for a very long time and you know they, they find it invaluable for the things that they've used it for. <clears throat> One of the cases I've discussed in the past that came up and I know we talked about crime in Hamtramck and how we believe that Hamtramck is a safe community. However, this was a case out of Tennessee where a woman was murdered by an acquaintance of hers. Her vehicle was stolen. That vehicle was actually picked up on a flock camera in the city of Dearborn. When they stopped that vehicle, they found that woman's body in the trunk of the vehicle. So her body was recovered for her family. That wasn't a case that originated with a crime that happened in Dearborn, but it ended up in Dearborn. Recently, the city of Ferndale had an armed robbery where people were impersonating the police. They broke into an elderly man's home. Um, with um, several weapons. He was handcuffed and they um, were able to use Ferndale's flock safety cameras to um, start a joint investigation with the FBI and they were able to seize 20 illegal firearms, magazines, and they arrested three individuals. That, just, that was on Channel 4, that's a recent case out of Ferndale um, and they credited flock safety. We talked about all the communities in Michigan that are using Flock. Um, I know we talked about the gross points. I did check with Flock Safety and they're currently in talks with the gross point communities about adding that. And they've also added several other 
communities in Michigan that are currently using Flock. I do have Amy Cornell here from Fox Safety <coughs> that she flew in here to help with the presentation. If you have questions for her, she has a presentation that Rhonda can bring up on the screen if you have questions, if you want to see that presentation. Or you can... Yeah. Uh, Chief, for the storage, <coughs> how many days does that information uh, get saved in the storage? So it would be saved in there for 30 days and then it would automatically be deleted out of the system. Um, that is a flock safety standard and that is the standard that we would like to adopt as well. If you start getting into lower retention periods, then the, the data may not be useful for us because it, it could be, you know, we know how sometimes people don't report things right away. Maybe they don't report something until they see that it happened to their neighbor. And if that information is already gone by lowering that retention period. But it is a mandatory 30 days out of flock. And that would be the policy that we would follow as well. That means after 30 days, it gets deleted? Yes, that is correct. Okay. That information will not be available to be searched. Mr. Like Mr. Mayor uh, and, and Council, I just wanted to add, so the Chief and I had extensive talks in regards to this. Um, she really tried to address all the concerns we heard from both Council and the community to basically point out that, you know, exactly what this is going to be used for. Um, and, I, and I think she really hit everything on here. Completely. Um, all the fears were in my opinion, unjustified on it. Um, it's, a, it's an amazing tool. Um, I did speak with the Dearborn Police Chief as well personally. He called me and said, and, and offered to write a letter on behalf for our chief. Um, and he said he can't get enough of them. He, he's, I think they said they got about 120 of them, if I'm not mistaken, and they're having more. So it's a pretty amazing tool. Mm -hmm. Like I said, all the, all the communities that surround us currently have them, Detroit, Highland Park, Michigan State Police. I mean, they're, they're being added everywhere and every day. Flock is adding new customers, and I really do believe I, I try I, I believe in this community. I, I love everything about Hamtramck. I would do never do anything to jeopardize the the safety of our of our community of our council or to to put you in any kind of situation to where you can't trust the police department. But I truly believe that this is an invaluable tool that will help us continue to move in the right direction of of crime solving. I mean, we can't do everything alone without, you know, technology to help us. So Chief, just to clarify to our citizens and residents in the city of Hamtramck, that this information will not get sold to any third party. That's correct. And also will not get used for any immigration or, you know, things like that. That is absolutely 100% correct. Like I said, it won't be used for, for immigration purposes. It's not going to be used to, to follow people around or to figure out, like I said, it is simply just a crime fighting tool and all of the information that shows up on a flock license plate reader is everything that is available to our naked eye anyways by you seeing a vehicle but you may have you may think that you caught the license plate with your with your eye and maybe you were off a couple digits i mean it's definitely things that you know that, that we can use to Mr. Mayor, a quick question can you add a clause there that if you have any information if you have provided to third party you have to talk to a council Need to pass the council no, no, yeah. Yeah, no, we will not, the, the information yeah, it will not says be here would not be used for immigration no. enforcement, traffic enforcement, mm -hmm. harassment, or intimidation using based solely protected. Though there's some, uh, like, announce, but any party, I might point to any party if you want to yeah. give, it up, give, it, give it up. And, and yeah, it's the, yeah, it's data that's because not going to be Because we are, at the end of the day, we are the liable for our residents. You know. Um, okay, so end of the day, yes, very good idea. Um, I believe so. A lot of council member convinced me to vote for yes. So after that, if it's still same shooting and crime, still cannot we cannot uh, catch it or we cannot do anything. So I'm gonna work for that. <laughs> All the tools you need, we're gonna give you. We're gonna give you. But remember. Secret service and FBI can overrule anybody they want. Okay? There's no question what you're saying, what I'm saying, what I'm written. And nobody can stop it. So that's all, just one that you know. Like I said, if I, have, I do have Amy from Flock. If you had questions for her, like I said, if you wanted to run through her presentation, it's all up to you. No, in that case we are okay. What's she going to say? I think we got a presentation from her last time, so we don't want yeah. to get this meeting. Yep. Yeah. You, you had concern about the price. You said it's so right. 2500 on the website, and right here it's 3000 is, is there any way, chance of negotiation? <laughs> <laughs> 
So they basically, you know, just like anything else that you purchase, you know, things are things are going up in price. Um, there was a price that they had had locked in. Block is actually going to be price for quite some time now. Um, yeah, you can actually sure. yeah. address, um, address that. And, does this yes. block want to throw in another camera? And just <laughs> sure, we'll throw in another camera. No. <laughs> um, that's a great question, actually. The, there was a price increase around April or May. Um, it was one of the first increases, but we had to increase just a little bit, so it went from 2500 to 3000 per camera. So I guess there's no holiday discount. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. No Black, no Black Friday. No Black Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, not yet. Oh. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank well, you. Thank 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 you. Yes. Councilman Mahmoud. Yes. Councilman Chowdhury. Yes. Councilman Musa. Yes. Councilman Rafai. Yes. Councilman Hassan. Yes. Mr. Mayor, Resolution 2023-182 has finally been approved. We can go, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, next one is Resolution 2023-183, approving installation of new stop signs and approval of traffic control orders. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Mr. Mayor, um, Councilman Rafai asked us about this at the last meeting, so subsequently sent it to the chief and the fire chief as well to review, and it was their determination that it would be uh, helpful. Yeah, absolutely. You know, as you know, that we are committed to safety and traffic safety in the community. Um, adding these stop signs, I believe that you know that the council has has recommended some new locations that um, you can, as you if you drive around town, you can see that DPW's kind of already got the initial phases of at least putting the poles in and the flags up. So kind of just preempting. Um, a little bit of approval without actually installing the stop signs themselves, but I'm ready. Can see, I, can, <laughs> <laughs> I can run down the, real, the list real quick for the public. Um, those would be uh, Brownback at the intersection of Norwalk, Brownback at the in intersection of Edwin, Brownback at the intersection of Yemens, Brownback at the intersection of Belmont. So pretty much you cannot drive down Brownback without having to stop at a stop sign. Um, Gallagher at the intersection of Trowbridge. Gallagher at the intersection of Yeeman Street, which personally is my favorite. Um, McKay at the intersection of Berger. McKay Street at the intersection of Casimir. And Casimir at the intersection of Sobieski. So we really think that these will continue to hopefully <coughs> slow down traffic and work on I have to say I was surprised today at how fast DPS got the preliminary signs up. I didn't think they did that and they were already up. Yeah, they got them going up pretty quick, so. Mr. Chairman, the chief, the most chief from the fire and the police department, also our city manager, I thank you guys for taking this to, you know, it's, it's really, really important as most of these streets or inter uh, intersections are nearby schools. And, uh, you know, I've seen people flying during school time, so I'm happy there's uh, they will be placing the stop signs here. At least that kind of slowed down, uh, you know, uh, drivers around the city. So I'm happy that you know the our DPS are placing the, the poles, and hopefully within a day or two, maybe signs will be up there. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling it might be up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and so again, thank you for you know, even also the DPS for you know, they're moving fast to put these poles on. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I want to appreciate Councilman Rafai for bring, um, brought forward these things, but I also wanted to ask, uh, what's the state requirements? The, if, I, if I'm within a 500 years, if I got to stop every 500, one block and drive through this street, I might as well start walking. Okay? <laughs> That's just not a car anymore. Uh, you know, it's just <laughs> stop, stop, stop and go. And I, I understand we're trying to do these uh, traffic controls and safety of our communities. You know, we stop and go. But what's the study line? Because I try to get a traffic a stop sign um, for on a carpenter. That's the Detroit side because I contacted the, mm -hmm. uh, the city of Detroit council members in Owen County because the Gallagher. Uh, coming in on Carpenter and there's blind spots because of the stores mm -hmm. and they T-bone many of them I have put it but Besides that it's just like what's the required and how many uh, block do you skip and before you start installing stop sign or right, so there's not really a state requirement no. for yeah. that it just requires that um, Some sort of study be done is that we kind of you know monitor traffic and things like that and we look at 
um, the traffic flow, like, as Councilmember Fai stated, that you know the area around the schools, and that um, a traffic control order is created, which is uh, what I've done, obviously, for all of these stop signs, to um, mm -hmm. have them approved, and they have to be approved by the public body in order to install those. And those are pretty much, I, you know, I understand what you're saying, but like I said, there's only so many things in our community that we can do. Um, to help with traffic and transit and things like that, and stop signs obviously are are good at, and you know we can't lower our speed limit really any lower than we we already have it. And then just so are, continue to work with traffic. Sorry, to but I think it's one of the concerns from the community was asked during our campaign time that people want to have to uh, speed bump in many street because of people driving a little crazy. So, uh, are you planning to do anything in uh, Conant, or this is between us and the trails? Can you request them to have one? Because this is one of the scary roads. Every every week, something right. happening yeah. here. Conan, unfortunately, is a county road, and everything depends on. That's why I said, can we request them to have one? Yeah, yeah we have. I have. Uh, I don't know if they will. Even the uh, here's the procedure. Excuse me. Uh, we have to uh, request from council send the letter That's to right, the Doctor Julius Scott. And, the, and she has to follow up with those things. And can you, Mr. City Manager, can you follow up with this? I mean, they can, but I don't, I don't do anything. I don't know. That's a pretty major road to be putting. But still, still, you can send the request, see how this goes. Why I'm saying, uh, me and Dr. Khaled, one day we send the letter to the one county executive for the Conan Road, remember what happened, and after that he listened. Maybe we could send a letter. Tell, addressing our concerns of the speed yep, of the yeah, something generally, like generally to see if maybe there's some other more traffic control devices perhaps suggest speed ups. I don't know if a speed. It will not allow, it will not allow speed bumps. Yeah, so not not maybe, speed. maybe another light. No, maybe. the light. Maybe a light. Yeah, light. Like we are working on a crosswalk yep. now. Yep. That's yeah. the process. If we put the light, we can put one light up. Yeah. Yeah. There's every accident. Cool. All right, so let's vote on the Thank existing you. resolution now. Yeah, which. I apologize, but um, who motioned and seconded? I motioned. I, I, I motioned and he seconded. Uh, no, second. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Councilman Rafai? Yes. Councilman Musa? Yes. Councilman Chowdhury? Yes. Councilman Mahmoud? Yes. Councilman Hassan? Yes. Councilman Asamiri? Uh, yes. Thank you. <coughs> Mayor Resolution 2023 183 has been approved. No. Um, Mr. Right. Mayor? I have a request, please, because I know the next resolution might take some time, and we did not swear in one of the appointments that are here. Can we do that, please? So, yeah, sure. Thank you. Just spend the rules and go ahead and sorry about that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is Akram. Uh, he's actually going to be a uh, member of the Youth Advisory Council. Everyone else was reappointed. He was the new one. So you can stand on the other side if you'd like, just because you're going to sign this. So, uh, yep. Uh, I state your name. I am Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. And the Constitution of the State of Michigan. And the Constitution of the State of Michigan. And that I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge. The duties of. The duties of. The Youth Advisory Council. The Youth Advisory Council. Of the City of Hamtramck. Of the City of Hamtramck. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations. And let me just state this on record. We are looking for youths to be a part of this uh, council, this advisory council. So if anyone's watching or anybody's aware or knows any youth, it, well, <coughs> anyone under 18, that's what's considered the youth of the community. So if anybody's interested, let them reach out to the clerk's office. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. All right, the next one is a resolution that we brought back. 2023-184, approving honorary naming of Holbrook Street between Buffalo Street and St. Open Street as Cox Line Avenue. Motion. Motion. Second. All right. Now we're back to discussion, and uh, I think we already did solve the discussion. And so, Mr. Mayor, I have a quick thing that I have to say. That, yeah. I mean, this is very, very important. But it's not taking us anywhere. We only did what we need to be to get done. We did one of the biggest rally at Mr. Mayor Porter mentioned. We have done the first resolution you and me discussed, even though I'm up north, we talk about it. 
to being there is a lesson. Uh, I mean, if you think about the if Myanmar, Rohingya, 742,000 people followed to Bangladesh. I mean, this is happening everywhere in the world. Some of the Muslims are getting targeted. And if you bring all those to the Hamchami to a street name, I mean, I don't know how much viable this is for the community and how much it's going to work. I have respect to the Mr. Bill Maya and Mr. Abdi Alam. You know, they, are, they have a great points, but I think um, my personal opinion is still sort of stay away from naming street. I mean, it's not going to take us anywhere furthermore. Okay, I respect your opinion. Thank you. I myself was undecided about this, but I thought about it, and I think this is the last country in the world that's still occupied, being occupied, and I think it's uh, it's the hottest and most pressing topic that's going on now. Um, and I think it's, uh, like I said, a symbolic thing that's going to be done by city of traffic because the the outcomes of saying no to this resolution after uh, after it became public is going to be uh, disastrous to the city council of Hamtramck uh, that they reject uh, resolution naming the street in support of Palestine. I know it's not going to change anything, but uh, it's just showing the, what Hamtramck stands for and what the community here uh, stands for. Um, the other side, they will not uh, appreciate it if we say no. Uh, and I think most people around the world these days, even in the United States, despite of the official stance of the government, that it's committed to defend Israel, the majority of the American people are against the genocide, supporting the freedom of Palestinian people to live. <coughs> in peace and liberty just like any other nation around the world. And I think this will be, uh, it's going to be going with the, with the current, you know, um, and it's not against what people want. Uh, that's my opinion now after I thought about it and uh, I think people will appreciate that. So I, I respect your opinion. Uh, I know there are other cases around the world that they need our support as well, but no other case as important as a Palestinian case. There is no oppression uh, and injustice like what's happening now in Palestine. Um, so I think this is going to be a great decision just to confirm our stance and our support to the Palestinian people. And we'll be the first city to do that. Um, I think this is. After I thought about it, it's a good idea. Other city council may stole this idea from us and, and became the first to name the street after, you know, in support of Palestine, what's going on now. <coughs> so thank you for your uh, opinion. I sure. respect thank that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Councilman Abu Musa, go ahead. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to you about this resolution, uh, street renaming about uh, Palestine. I'm very unfortunate. And I'm unfortunate, the whole council is unfortunate. Why are you discussing these things on the public the media at this time? Why you can't discuss the one in the behind before the bring is here? Even we pass through this uh, street name today, but damage already done. People already know what we are divided at this time, why are we going to bring this back to the table? If we remember, if I remember, a couple of weeks ago we had another situation come up for the someone appointing someone we don't know the council. And we hope we learn from those mistakes. We share each other our thoughts and we come to the conclusion together. I'm not against of Palestine. Palestine is my heart. But my colleague, my friend, uh, Mohit Mahmoud pronounced this uh, Rohingya issue. I have a small country in Bangladesh, mother of humanity, humanity of our beloved Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. She is doing the trouble <coughs> for the financially and all other things. Still, she welcomed those refugees to Bangladesh. And we are not a rich country, we are 
developing country. To kill those Rohingya people come up there suffering there. And not only this, in 1990s, Kosovo people, they are suffering all those things too. Recently, people from India, Kashmir, they torture very badly. All those people come into there and they ask for us to put a name for the, our community. What are you going to do these things? And Palestine is not alone. No, no, some of the countries in the world, Bhutan, Nepal, maybe America people don't know those names also the country. Palestine is not an independent country. People all over the world don't know who is Palestine. We discuss when we've been in the uh, Trubert city for our uh, training. training purpose. We discuss those. Palestine in our heart. We come up. And we are the only first council in the whole America, North America, who will bring a resolution and condemn the violence of um, Israel. And we condemn all those violence in Gaza. And we told them this war does not start November, October 7th. This war, long, long, long time ago, this Palestine already uh, killed by the Israeli people. This council does everything whatever they need to do to woke up the whole community and whole world. Now, even if we bring this resolution, approve this city of uh, uh, street name, Palestinian, but people know what we did. We found this resolution, we bring it back. Why for this resolution? Because you are not agree with this. We bring it back again because now we are changing our, ourselves. It is very hard for me to shift one to another one. You can convince me all day, you can tell me all day, but it is, if you discuss with me before, whoever bring this resolution, we can be, under the law we can discuss two, three people together. At least we do not have people, the whole world, community, and you have said people don't want to see this all. This time, we are defying, we are, are uh, debating about the Palestine. This thing, when we are debating about the Palestine, is mean us the successful rally we did it is nothing. Whatever I did for is nothing. Because we, we cannot do a small piece of uh, street Palestinian name. I'm not against of those, but I'm against of this procedure. All right, thank you. So, uh, a question Have you proposed any of those? cases for Myanmar um, or other ones and the council rejected it? That's a question. No, I don't propose anything yet. But I think somebody come up. How many still we have, Mr. Chair, we can provide them? I, I'm just saying, have you I do not. I do not propose anything there. So maybe if you did, the council no. would agree. Uh, there is no comparison between Mr. The Mr. Chair, um, we, we can do it. But I, I'm, I don't want it to be something is not necessary. But I suppose it's a well-known whole world, whole Muslim community, also especially in here, about European America, who is Palestine. They're suffering years and years, decades and decades, by the Israeli army and Israeli politicians. And our people, the, our uh, regular people, they are very good concerned about the genocide. They are not against uh, Palestinian innocent people. Mr. Chair. Uh, the other thing is mentioning the appointment of, of someone with that's like we discussed last time that's a city manager appointment city council have nothing to do with that we care we get involved in appointing department heads we talked about this before any employee under that is a city manager thing and we don't have to get involved with his decision we can refer people encourage people to apply but I think we decide we, we discussed this before uh, it shouldn't be an issue, uh, especially when we try to diver diversify the city hall and, and uh, you know, hire people from different backgrounds. Um, anyways, I respect your opinion. I mean, like I said, we can always disagree about things and uh, keep it professional. Nothing personal here. But, uh, Mr. Uh, Chair, important. Go ahead. If, he, if any other councilman want to speak, I want to be the last person to speak and because... Yeah, yeah give me that. Yeah, I want to speak for this issue. For Palestinian, I support all time Palestinian in Gaza. I keep to support all time protest and everything. If in donation, I am the first person we're gonna spend donation better for any anybody. We get it. But the name of the street, 
I think my opinion, I have to respect other people, or my community. I think it's not, uh, it's not gonna make a support for the uh, name street. We're gonna save the name street for different issue, not for this, not for this issue. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, so I agree with all those council members, respectfully agree, disagree. Uh, there's a the couple of things that make me to bring it back um, because of mayor speak a couple of points and from the floor also a couple of discuss, um, discussion came and, and is the uh, yeah, I respect Mohit Mahmood in not going nowhere. I respect uh, Mr. Abu Musa and Al Sumari also. Your discussion is a space. The thing is here uh, what we bring and we're showing one is this is the first city will be the Palestinian name, even though it's not going nowhere. Second, we're not going to give anybody any opportunity to. Uh, criticize our decision today, take to the newspaper and write different way, which we think maybe they're not going to write same way, they're going to write something in the different way and, and more <coughs> criticism, more uh, problem will create for our uh, community and, and other things. So again and again I'm requesting um, uh, my council members, uh, I brought it, and I think it's not going to be a big problem, but we still... Uh, another word, Mr. Mayor said, final confirmation. All those support what we did, this is the one, again, confirming we are with the Palestine all the time. That's why. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. And I think, uh, I mean, the only thing different than our uh, situation that we mentioned is this this is the last country in the world that's still under occupation. And, and the people, other issues, maybe internal conflict within a country, which we always stand with the oppressed people against the oppressor. This is the only country that's left in the world under occupation. And in this war, the whole world is on one side and the Palestinian people alone on the other side, which is very unfair and very unjust. Um, so I think uh, it deserves that we interpret our stance and our support into something in action. Uh, I don't think it's going to hurt us. It's going to hurt us if we reject this resolution now within our community. Uh, I am not worried about what's going to happen outside of our community. Um, but I, I respect your opinion. I know you still support Palestine. You just have um, issues with the procedure, which I understand. And I respect. So I, okay. I would go ahead and call for a vote now and see. Put me in a spot. <laughs> you forget how we make cook your food in our home. That's why you forget who <laughs> brought the resolution. Okay, yes. I know you'd be proud to say yes, that's why. Councilman El Samiri. I said no. Councilman Mahmoud. No. Councilman Chabi. Yes. Councilman Musa. No. Councilman Rafai. Yes. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Resolution 20. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you guys. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. So, uh, our still, Mr. Councilman is still going to pay for our dinner tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're done for with the new business, and we move to the reports. Uh, I start with my report, which I don't have much to say. Um, I was actually one of the activities I did. I was invited to a charity dinner to raise money for, for Gaza, for the Palestinian people, by a, a couple uh, Yemeni organizations. Um, and they raised close to 100,000 in support of Palestinian people. 
Um, so that was a very successful event. And uh, other than that, we've been just busy within the city and uh, uh, despite of the disagreement that happened today, tonight in this uh, discussion, I really appreciate everyone's opinion. Like I keep saying, I'm very proud of all of you. We always disagree, but we don't take it personal. So I, I, I understand and I value every point you guys discussed. Um, and I respect every opinion you guys said. Uh, I know we will continue to, to disagree, but we will never take it personal or we'll never fight or go out of the ethical way of disagreeing uh, in the professional way. So thank you so much for uh, everything, for your attendance, for your support, and uh, hopefully um, we can you know, decrease the tension by going out for dinner on Mr. Sway, we'll pay for that. <laughs> I, I heard he was catering all of City Council. All right. Right, <laughs> Jim? Thank you, guys. Can we vote on that? <laughs> Can we vote? And the uh, next report is uh, Mr. Mayor Potem, please. Okay. Mr. Chair, um, I'd like to uh, uh, thank you, everyone. Disagree, agree, agree, disagree still. We are councilmen, we are good, good councilmen, good council meeting. Uh, Mr. John, can you please, a uh, couple of Ellis uh, people complaining, uh, go send our people something you can little bit repair. <coughs> At least the people can get out from there, you know, by the Ellie. One is uh, by the Al Haramain uh, Ellie. Can you please uh, look at that one? And and also another one by the Burger Street by the school back there. And, and normally, honestly, maybe one of your staff uh, drive uh, every day routinely, couple of alleys, see which one is real bad. Even They're all bad. yeah, uh, I understand some of them is very bad. So at least. Some of them is very bad, bring something and drop it over there. And it's not raining, stay there until snow time, and how you did a couple of other streets. So that is, that is the request uh, from the residents, and also request from me. So again, thank you, everybody. Um, uh, I like to say, uh, Councilman Naim Chaudhary did a very good job. Last uh, four years we worked together, some new idea, um, I came to the council and also again um, thanks for your service Mr. Chaudhary. Uh, we wish um, you come back again and, uh, and thanks for your service. All right, thank you and that's uh, thank you for reminding us to thank Councilman Chaudhary for his service. <clears throat> I mean I worked with him for the past two years and he was very supportive, very uh, professional. Uh, he cares about the city and the residents, and uh, I, I never, I mean, we disagreed about some stuff, but he is always uh, very professional about us agreeing, and uh, he was very supportive to us uh, as a, a whole council. And I wish him the best in his uh, next uh, endeavors, and, and if he's planning to come back to the city council or to run for anything else, uh, we wish him the best. and. We support him in anything he needs. So thank you so much. Uh, now, council report. Mr. Chair. Council. <coughs> I want to thank everybody tonight for showing up uh, to this council meeting. Uh, also to my dear friend Naim, who I have known for many years. Uh, always worked in the community. Always helped residents in the community. He's always out there. Uh, you know, uh, it was it's it's great that I have came to council and worked with him at least two years. Uh, and I know he will continue even, you know, he's not in city council, he will continue helping residents uh, all around the city of Hamtramck. Uh, I wish him all the best. Uh, it's time for him to have vacation with his family, maybe somewhere, <laughs> uh, Turkey or somewhere, so you can relax and enjoy your time with your family. Um, and you know, we're, we're here for you, and uh, if you're planning to run again, I wish you all the best. Thank you. So Mr. Mayor, uh, I just want to say that it's not anything against Palestinians. 
I just want to stand on the same point when we decided no other flag will flow in our Hamtramck city, but the state and uh, city of Hamtramck and a couple important flags. So I understand on the same points when we can on a whole world they are fighting for their democracy and their uh, you know freedom. If we can honor all the streets name by their name, then we're gonna stay neutral. That was my point that I came from. So nothing again to the steel. Uh, and I thank you everyone <laughs> and uh, I wish happy holidays and a happy new year. I don't think we're gonna see anyone before this is the last one for this uh, this year. So I wish everybody a happy new year and happy holidays. And of course, as I said, uh, you know, public service and artists, they never die. Their legacy always stays. So Naim, even if you're taking off from the next few years, maybe I hope you're gonna come back again and decided to run again. And uh, you know, you still have plenty of people put their trust on you and it doesn't mean skip up the public service. You know, stay awake, stay, uh, stay in touch with us. And you know, as I said before, it's not always everything goes the way we want it to be sometimes. Yeah. Things came different, so we still really appreciate everything. Um, nothing else I want to say, and thank you everyone. And uh, as I say, Happy New Year and Happy Holidays. We'll see you next year. Thank you. Uh, next. Okay. Um, Mr. Kumar. Um, <clears throat> uh, good evening, folks. Uh, Salaam Alaikum. Peace be upon you. Uh, thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, I am very honored to be part of this council and mayor, and even previous mayor. I am um, a social worker, a community activist. I love to serve the communities. I like I love to help someone to um, get better than where they are. Uh, always striving to. Uh, accommodate them because this country is consists of immigrants and many people come here and find a hardship, um, making things difficult. You know, make it's difficult than um, than where they come from. Uh, so you know, I always um, want to be part of the community movement and community improvement. Uh, I want to thank uh, Councilman uh, Mohid Mahmoud for the proclamations. Uh, it was very nice of you, kind of you, sweet of you and uh, our city manager, Max, uh, for reading this proclamation. And uh, first and foremost, I'd like to uh, thank you for this kind word from Dr. Alam and Mr. Bill Myers, as well as Ms. Bronica. And everyone, uh, uh, it's been an honor to serve this community. I will be still continuously serving, even if I'm not here, out there. I, I do business uh, with the public. And I'm a public servant. I like to help people get better again. And uh, this is my passionate. Uh, my family background is like that. We build a school back home. We build an orphanage school back home. Uh, we contribute to any organization, any non-profit organization. Anytime we could, we contribute and try to make a better life for the others. And uh, I'm always going to be around. You know, you know where to find me. Uh, I'm on Kona Street in Hamtramck. I shop here, live here, work here. So you will find me here to help you out. And uh, you have a great mayor, I, I tell you. And work with Mr. Mayor to get things better. Uh, you have a great administration. You have uh, City Clerk Rana Fraz. You have uh, uh, City Manager Max. City Attorney. Uh, city attorney. Uh, all the departments is a very... We, we are better shaped than ever before. Um, it's improving, it's getting better. And we have a surplus, so we have plenty of, thing, uh, plenty of money to uh, take care of this residents. And I appreciate you all for supporting me and always putting your trust in me. Uh, I'm grateful to be part of this uh, country, part of this world, because where I came from, I'm, I came from middle class family, it was hard. And I've been here most of my life, 30 years, and I'm very humble, very grateful to raising four kids and my wife, uh, along with my parents. We moved here in the 90s, and uh, you know, I need to say this. My grandfather uh, came to this country in 1916 as a sailor, New York, and then landed here in 1924. So, but he didn't apply for us to be immigrated. He died before he applied. But God knows where to put his grandchildren. So uh, my 
uh, grandfather lived in South West Detroit, and I was able to find his apartment, uh, you know, where he lived because he left some documents, like green card and other things. So it's a, it's a it's a blessing to be here, and I know he, uh, my grandfather, watching and seeing that his grandchildren are here in Michigan, and in living in the United States. So you know, it's grateful. Uh, I'm grateful and humble and blessing to be part of this world and part of this uh, America. Thank you so much. God bless America and the rest of the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Yes. Uh, Mr. Swell. Yes, I'd like to thank everyone who came today for the meeting. I'd like uh, to thank Naim Children uh, for the service. All four years we are working together, we make great job, good team. And I'd like to thank everyone and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, thank you everyone who came here and watching us on the social media and on the TVs. I like to, this is our last council meeting for the year 2023. I like to say all over the, my community and all about the people around surrounding, Happy New Year and Merry Christmas. And I'm telling the uh, community people, enjoy the time. Christmas time, we have 15 days, meter off on the Joseph Campo. Yeah. So shop freely and conveniently. So no meter charge at this moment to until uh, 25th Christmas. So enjoy your time and uh, shopping. I'm sorry to raise my voice. I'm not angry. This is my habit. I try to. Your tone. Uh, this is my tone. I try to. Modify myself. To Please don't take it me. personally. <laughs> <coughs> Palestine is my feeling. Yeah. People of Palestine is my feeling. When I childhood, since then I'm I'm 49 years old man. When I went to primary school in Bangladesh, since then is an idol. Our idol is the Araf, uh, Yasir Arafat. We see the man with the scar under the neck and the head. So that time we know who is Yasir Arafat and what he is doing here for his community and country. How much suffering these people of uh, Palestine. So I do know those things, but I am angry, disagree. Sometimes I have to stand, take my stance. Sorry. And it is nothing against of Palestinian, nothing against of personally, uh, especially uh, Mr. Mayor or my any co colleagues. It is nothing personally. I hope now we, uh, Whole world knows the first name of the state coming in him from Palestinian. Maybe I'm disagree with you, but I'm part of those things. And um, I'm very, very thankful to work with my beloved colleague, look a good friend, Mr. Naim Choudhury. You are really, really dedicated for the community. You are humble for this community. You work a lot for the community. Sometimes, some things come up, we cannot control ourselves. You have a great hope, you have a great thought. Sometimes those thoughts and hope do not come together, accomplish. Uh, and, I th I'm, and I know those things, failure, failure is the failure of success one day. If this council could be not for you, could be higher level also. I wish you very, very good luck and, and higher levels also. And I treat all of my colleague and friend. I, lo I like you guys and I love you with respect. I do not want to disrespect each individual anyone. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, can I add to this point about the free parking? Yes. I don't know, did you mention 18th. it? Right? It's actually the 19th. It's 12 days. It's 12 days up to, and then New Year's is another, it's extra day. From Friday. I swear it was 18. No, but it says um, 12 days leading up to and ending on New Year's Day. New Year's Day is calculated separately because that is its own day. So day of, uh, December being 31 days, 12 days up to New Year's is December 19th. Next Tuesday. So that's okay. connected, please. All right. From the next Tuesday. Alright, thank you so much. And uh we have a closed session. <coughs> Do I?
I think uh, having made another first, uh, and I appreciate what you did. Um, <coughs> so when I heard about this resolution that you're considering, I called my Palestinian friends. I've worked in the community for decades. I know a lot of leaders in the community, they were thrilled. They, they were yelling, crying, lots, just hooping on the phone. So thrilled, I can't believe this. And I called them and asked them if someone could come down here. And some were going to be coming down until you voted to remove it. I called them. I couldn't believe it. it was off. Thank you for pleading them. I'm sure they'll be thrilled. Uh, you, lot, you raise a lot of issues in this, and I, I think they need to be addressed. I can't do it here real quickly, but I do want to say, you know, certainly there's other issues in the world that are just as important to other people. And Palestine is not the only problem in the world, but right now it's taking precedent. Uh, and by saying it doesn't do anything, of course it does something. Why are you even here doing anything? Does this do anything? Everything does something. Yes, you're leaning towards something. Things change. You have to come. The only constant in the world is change. We're going to change. And you can only do it by doing acts like this. This was very visionary, whoever thought of this. I don't know who it was, but uh, uh, this will start a trend, hopefully. And maybe it'll be a change. And maybe people will be freed from occupation eventually. And maybe we can celebrate and take the signs back down after there's a free Palestine. They don't stand up forever, you know, these honorary names. They don't change the street names. They just are a symbolic uh, support to Palestine. Uh, and do, facts do change minds. You can change your vote. Once you learn something else about something, like, oh, the guy was there when he did that. Okay, now I'll vote differently. Yes, you can change your mind and your vote because you learn something new. That's not wrong to change your vote. Uh, anyways. Uh, I'll help raise funds to pay for the signs if we need that. I don't want to take any money out of taxpayers' money. And we'll celebrate every sign that goes up and make, it, make a celebration of this. Thank you so much for ending the year on a high note. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Bill. Uh, Tobin? Tobin Starrett? Starrett? Uh, greetings again. And uh, I'll keep it short. Again, right there, uh, appreciate the... Uh, uh, yeah, I'll come on this resolution, and I appreciate the uh, uh, hearing the comments from the uh, mayor and the uh, council people, those who uh, voted uh, for or against right there, too. And, uh, you know, it's, this is decisions of this kind right there, especially this, are not easy, not easily arrived at. And uh, appreciate the effort and look forward to uh, seeing. Uh, at least uh, some of you here will still be uh, coming back. I plan on not making this a one-time thing right there. So thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Osama Bakal? Yes. Hi, everybody. Uh, actually, I got two matters uh, I want to talk about. First of all, about the, uh, I came late and I heard you talking about Brombeck, about stop signs. I think it's a hopeless. Stop signs it doesn't work. I think there is I have to be a slow, you know, uh, speed bumps. S seriously, because I've seen a lot of people flying. I live in the corner of Hemans and Brombach. I think about two weeks ag uh, ago, there is a dead body over there by my corner, and they closed the, the whole block. I think you have to put at least three or four in there. There is school in the end uh, of the corner of Kenneth, and there is school in uh, Florian. And a lot of kids, they're just walking over there, and uh, people, kids, teenagers, they don't think about it. I think all of us, we went through all that. So it has to be a, like a speed pump. That's the first matter. The second matter is about Yemen Street. You know, I think, uh, I've seen they, they're doing a lot of remodeling and the streets are working. They're working in uh, Yemen Street. It, it looks like my block or my street from Joseph Campbell to, Ye to Yemen uh, and Brombeck, Yemen well, we call it Yemen. But it reminds me of back home. I live in the streets that, that have 
uh, you know, the streets, how it is. Like I live in Yemen, you know, it just it reminded me, like I'm staying in the same mode. So uh, uh, I wish if they can fix that. Brown bag, it's a lot of bums over there. I think I, I got a chain of uh, a lot of my neighbors, they complain about it, you know, so, you know axles and stuff. They, say, they, they keep patching it and patching it, so it's a hopeless case. It's, it's getting worse and worse. About uh, the third thing, I'm sorry, just sorry, I got one second. <laughs> About uh, the street, the street, uh, which is uh, it's a great thing, you know, it's not going to do any better to, to, to the Palestine at this, but at least it represents, you know, the good heart of it. About, you know, at least that's the minimum thing. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank you. Uh Rukhaya Abdul Rahman. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Peace and blessings to everybody. Um, to get my voice, I had to get work done. I'm out of it. I came here for a reason to talk about what I believe to be Islamophobia against me in this city. I have the facts and everything. Coming here, hearing this, it's not about me. It's about what's right and what's wrong. So thank you all for the what I saw. The justice, the righteousness happened. The change that is constant, he talked about. And being with the oppressed. Well, I'm black in America, Muslim my whole life. Don't you think that we think who, who's with us when somebody's getting killed? Oh, unless you're Muslim, nobody cares. It does not matter at the end of the day. It, this was done to me. What's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. Always. And the law is always with the oppressed. Back to where I was going with this. Um, I just want to be on record that I am dealing with something in this city which was all together, just a total disaster which I filed a report against. And I will follow up with all of you in the email, because it's not about that today. It was about what happened today. By the grace of the law, I was able to see it. Thank you. So Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, that's all for public comment. Rona. Oh. Uh, you didn't check any of your boxes, but uh, I, will assume I, you want to <laughs> I assume you want to speak. Thank okay. You. This is not a political class or political space, but you know, injustice anywhere, the threat to the justice everywhere. We may not control the injustice, but we can address the injustice. It doesn't matter how small our city is, but it's the issue. Whether it is our president against the place and against the you know, international issue or the international policy, Yuhan Tramik has proven that what is ideal for us, and this is the only city in the whole United States that Muslim mayors and council. You have shown that this is what we are standing for. It's not like, I only just give one small message to the community and those who are listening and will be listening. When that 1400 uh, Israeli kids and women been killed, I said Hamas is the bad deal and they did bad. Then when 20,000 people been killed and slaughtered and massacred and it is done as a demolition and it is occupation. So this is my understanding that, you know what, bad is bad. But Hamas is not representing as a Hamas, it's the state of Palestine. My question to tonight, each and everybody, when we go against Iraq, we say Iraq and you know, America, we are not saying that Palestine and Israel, we are saying Hamas and Israel. Here is the misleading. Tonight, what Hamtramik has shown, that we're standing for the oppressed, and you have did. It may not bring any redressity, it not bring any whatsoever, you know, the, the good feeling or something. But as we stand, it is the best feeling for me. I am an advocate. I've been fighting all my adult life for the African American, Bangladeshi American, Muslim American, and today, you did not, you know, uh, uh, let me down. So I really appreciate everybody. My friend Musa, you didn't vote, but great. I know we spoke long time. You know, also many thank you, Muhammad Hassan, thank you, uh, Amir Ghalib, doctor, thank you, Khalil Rifai, thank you, Naim Liam Chudu, thank you, and Muthmau, thank you, and especially Ham Tramik. Thank you. Ham Tramik is for us. Rana thank you. for us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's all for public comments, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, if you don't mind, I just wanna. Uh, to Samus. We, we did a study, we are putting a stop signs. Hopefully another study of that stop signs don't help. And then maybe our chief will find a way we're able to get those people that speed or. Yeah, that is, I've seen you put those stop signs. But it's still that, that, that didn't avoid that, you know, the, the, the accident. Yes. Still, as I told you, there's a dead body 
not even two weeks in that. Okay. All right, so we can discuss that uh, after. Uh, I'll talk to you after that. All right. Thank you so much. So with that, we come to uh, the end of uh, the public comment, and we have a closed session. Brief one. Thanks. We're not coming back short. Yeah, we're not coming back to vote. We're just going to adjourn after that. Mr. Mayor, can I take the minutes? No, we are not. No, so can we get motion, please? Motion. Motion. I'll second. All right, so we lost. Just please, please. But you can make Christmas.